Hey, I'm at today. I got five tools you didn't know you needed until now. If you like these tools, you'll love the ones I've already shown in previous videos. I'll link those videos in the description and at the end of this video for you to go check out. Number one on the list, this is the Inker Tiny T. This is one of the coolest little rules you'll ever see. I almost made a wrap. This little tiny T is about four inches long, give or take. This will slide along this little piece of T track. If you did want to remove it from the track, it's really easy to do so. And these are just bolted on, so you can actually unscrew those. If you just wanted to use this as a layout tool without the, this piece, you could certainly do that. One thing I'd like to point out is this T-Track has a ledge on the left side that actually uh, makes this blade will contact the back and that's gonna keep everything nice and square. If you don't put it on that way, if you put it on backwards and tighten it down, it's actually gonna bend your blade because it has to come over that little, that little notch there. So be sure to put it in correctly, just like this. If you're gonna use this like as a square or marking device from where it makes contact with the wood out to the ends about three and seven eighths inches long, the outside edge all the way to the end is four and a half inches. And the reason I use my measuring tape is because it only goes out to three inches. It leaves space for this end rule, which is very handy for something I'll show you in a minute. The blade of the Tiny T rule is stainless steel. So you're not gonna have to worry about it rusting. It has various scales on here that you can actually put your pencil in to make the mark. On this line is 30 seconds. On this line is 1 16th, and then the 32nd again. There's actually 1 64th marks across here, so you can get really, really precise. And then also 30 seconds up here. As a matter of fact, on the 64th, you can see it actually goes 1 64th, 2 64th, 3 64th. So you can really dial in any precision you need. And on the end, you also have 30 seconds of an inch for your end scale from zero to two inches. You can draw parallel lines using those marks that are pre-cut into the rule. You just drop your pencil on the line and then you can draw that line. I've shown several setup blocks before, but because this has this little tiny piece of T-track on there, you can actually set this up upright. It'll stand on its own, even though it is really thin, and you can actually use that to set the depth of your saw blades. Another great feature is you can actually use it on your router table to set the depth of your router bits. You can also use it on fixed base routers to set the depth of the bit on these. I really like the cutout windows you can see through and actually set the depth of the router bit by looking and seeing where it's at through the scale. This is a really, really affordable precision woodworking tool you should pick up and put it in your toolbox. One of the coolest additions to my shop has been the Shapeco 4 XXL from Carbide 3D, the sponsor of today's video. I love having my Shapeco in the shop because I've been able to create some awesome stuff. I've been able to make these custom router tray inserts, these wrench holders, catch-all trays, mallets, and so much more. I also use the CNC to batch out mallet templates for our online store as well as some other products we sell. Having a CNC in the shop has allowed us to bring in extra income because it's like having another employee in the shop cutting parts while I'm doing something else. That's why it's such a great investment because it can pay for itself extremely quickly with the products you can make with it. It's easy to get started with Shapeco. They have great customer service and free software available to help you run your machine. What's awesome about Carbide 3D machines is everything is included, like the work holding, the dust collection attachments, the hybrid table, software, training, and support should you need it. If you're interested in learning more about Shapeco or you wanna get one for yourself, there's a link in the description below to carbide3d.com. Go check them out. This is a Pika pencil. What is a Pika pencil? Pika actually has a line of drawing or marking instruments for us woodworkers, and they work really well. And not only that, they got some really cool features. Let me show you. If you're anything like me, you've been buying bags of these little mechanical pencils, but the maddening thing about these is you'll be marking and the, just like that, the pencil lead breaks so easy on these things. This is actually a 0.7, so it's actually even a thicker lead than the 0.5. The Pico Pencil has a lot of features and the lead doesn't break like that. Let me show you. One of my favorite features, if you have an apron, then you can obviously put this in the apron. You can put this in there. This little clip actually has some little teeth that kind of grab on to your pants. So they're not gonna go anywhere. And you can actually pull the pencil out, use it, and then put it back and it's going to be there. It's kind of silly. That's one of my favorite things because it makes it so convenient to have on you. So this is the Pika Dry. It's just a pencil and you can see the lead. You think it, it's kind of a thicker lead up near the pencil itself, but it comes to a point. It actually has a sharpener built into this carry case as you can see there. All you do is stick that thing in there and rotate it and you have a sharp pencil. It's super easy and it's very convenient they built that in to the holder. 
And this, like any other mechanical pencil, all you do is push the button down to extend the lead. If you're using regular pencils to mark on maple or pine or anything like that, you can see that they make a mark and you can actually see them. When you're working with purple heart or walnut, sometimes it can be hard to see those marks, especially on the darker woods. The Pika, pop that off, you can take the lead out. Don't dump yours on the floor like I did. Has refills, you can get it in red or yellow or regular graphite color. Let's go with yellow. It marks on purple heart, super clear. You'll be able to see that all day long. And then on walnut, all day long. Pika has other products as well, like this deep hole marker. The nib on it on the shaft is, is much deeper than the regular standard pencil. So if you needed to get down into the bottom of a hole and make a mark, you could do that with this. If you pick up a pick a pencil, pick a pick a pick a pell of pickle pencils. If you pick up a pick a pencil, also pick up one of these multi-use packs that has the yellow, the red, and the refills in there for standard lead. Next on the list is a Woodpecker Saddle T6. This is basically a few tools in one. This is essentially a T-square, but it's also a rule, but it's also uh, kind of like a pocket rule. Now there's a few reasons why I chose to show you the Saddle T6 in the same video with the Incra Mini. This edge and this edge are exactly the same. So they're coplanar, you can actually Mark that and mark that. That is the same line. I can't tell you how many times using a traditional square that I would mark and then have to flip the board over and try to eyeball it. This takes care of that. I like that part. This is also a perfect 90 degree angle this away. So we know that when I put that on there, this is actually going to be square, a square line to this edge every time. The way the Saddle T6 is designed, you can see that it kind of falls off or is beveled toward the bottom. I really like that about a lot of the woodpecker's tools like on the T-Rule and on this. That way you get that line right next to the piece you're actually gonna mark and you don't wind up mismarking because of the thickness of the blade. These holes are in 30 seconds inch of an increment if you get the imperial scale from zero to six inches. The actual length, total length that you can measure on this is six and three quarters. You can just drop your pencil into say the two inch mark if you wanted to draw a two inch line and drag or scribe it there. You can do three inches, whatever you're doing there, but it's gonna make them perfectly parallel to the edge that you're working off of. I've said this several times on any of the woodpecker's tools I've shown. One of the main things that I really appreciate about the woodpecker's line is the fact that every single thing they make is exactly the same as far as measurements go. If I line all of these up at zero, every mark all the way down through there is exactly the same from zero all the way through six inches. Or if I had a 24 inch one of these and a 24 inch T-square, they would be exactly the same from start to finish. You can't say that on most tools. Also, this is a pretty thick piece of aluminum. You're not gonna bend it under normal use. You can actually even stick it in your pocket if you so chose, or your apron pocket, or whatever you, however you carry it around. But it's very durable, you're not gonna, you ain't gonna hurt it under normal use. Now, I know they're not for everybody, but if you appreciate accuracy, you appreciate quality, and you appreciate American made, then the Woodpecker's line is a really good tool line. Next on the list is the gripper. I'm sure you've seen this around YouTube a bunch. This is one of those tools that a lot of people have, and there's a good reason for it. They're just excellent tools to have in the shop, especially for the table saw. Let me show you. I've used a variety of push sticks on a variety of projects. Some troll commented the other day that, ah, you're busted, I see the gripper, you're not even using it. I don't use it for everything, I only use it for specific purposes. If I have a cut to make like this, this is a very thin cut, and I have to get right up next to the blade, especially if it's to where a push stick like this will not go past the blade without hitting the blade. I could use one like this, but I don't like my hands being that close to an exposed blade. That's why I love the gripper. I can cut that thin stock without having to actually worry about my hand being on that blade or near the blade. And if I needed to use it on thicker pieces, you can adjust this piece down, which is what makes the gripper really nice because it puts that little foot down, gives you a little more balance or a little more stability there when you're making those type cuts on thicker stock or thinner stock. Doesn't really matter, it'll adjust to all of them. The knobs, everything on this is really high quality feeling. 
You're not going to feel like you got a cheap push stick that's unsafe. When you feel it and you use it, you're going to know that you got a good piece of equipment in the shop. Now, if you're like me, you've probably seen one of these floating around for years and you never have picked one up. I'm telling you, when you get to ripping those little thin pieces like that over the top of that blade with that little push stick, you know how uneasy that feels. This takes that uneasiness all away from you. Here you can see where I'm trying to use a hole saw, which is traditionally what you would drill a hole with on wood. You can see it's actually smoking because it's dull and they just don't work good. And it's actually sawing the wood versus if you used a Forster bit, you can see the wood chips come flying out. It's actually cutting the wood. That's what I like about the Forster bit. The holes are gonna be much smoother when you drill with the Forstner bit versus when you drill with a hole saw. You're, also, you're gonna get a cleaner cut. You can also drill at a certain depth and stop and have that wood and all that extra removed versus a hole saw you can't do that with. If you need to inset a coin like I have in the past or dowels, anything like that, you can just drill to whatever depth you want and stop. And because of the way a Forstner bit is made, if I had a specific spot I wanted to drill into, it has that point on there, much like a brad point bit. That's gonna give you a good starting place so that it's not gonna move on you. So you'll be able to kind of sink that in and then start drilling from there and the way they have these teeth on there, and that's why you get these shavings like this, because actually cutting the wood with this blade, those teeth help get a good start. It doesn't tear the wood out like on a hole saw. And Forstner bits are actually perfect for a drill press. This is where I use them the most. Go ahead and grab you a good set of Forstner bits. I guarantee you're gonna come back and thank me when you need that specific size you wouldn't have otherwise had. If you like these five tools, you're gonna to love these five. Click that box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. I also put together a whole playlist of these five tool series that you can check out right there.